Hey everyone, sorry if the lighting and or camera angle is a little off. I'm shooting, we'll say on location, but uh, not in my normal situation here. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that I still provided a little bit of 3D printing content. The last couple of videos I've done have been around the nerd block, and I've got some stuff that I wanted to share with you. So today I wanted to touch on something I did when I was building my RepRap printer that I think made it a little bit safer. Um, one of the things I wanted when I was building my printer was to have a hotbed that heated up very quickly. And how I went around doing that was by building, by purchasing a silicon heating pad and attaching it to the bottom of the aluminum uh, print bed. Now the silicon pad runs on 120 volts at 200 watts and it actually heats up as fast or maybe even slightly faster than my hot end. So uh, if I set my hot end to 200 degrees and my uh, print bed to 100 degrees, the print bed usually hits the 100 degree mark before the hot end's done warming up. Um, what that usually entails though is a relay connected to the 12 volts to switch it on and off and 120 volts which is connected to your mains and then out to the silicon pad. And I didn't really like that. It seemed a little unsafe to have just raw 120 volts running to the back of the 3D printer. So what I wanted to do was sort of close that off as much as possible. And what made sense to me was there's already 120 volts going into the power supply, so why not integrate the relay into the power supply? So that's what I did. Now, I wasn't able to record video footage at the time, but I did take pictures as I went, so I'm just gonna show the pictures as we go through here and explain what I did and why. So. The first step was to extend the switch wires off of the relay. These are the ones that connect to the 12 volt power supply and tell the relay when to switch on and when to switch off. So essentially my ramp board is still gonna be sending out the, okay, 12 volts, this should be heating the heat bed. And that power is enough to turn the switch bar, or the relay on, which connects my 120 volts to my pad. So then obviously I also had to solder on to the 120 volts coming in. Now I will give a bit of a warning, although we're not getting close to the capacitors in this mod, there are charged capacitors in this power supply, even if the power supply has been unplugged for days or even weeks. So it's not for the faint of heart. You shouldn't have to get close enough to the capacitors that you're in danger of getting shocked, but you do, do definitely have to be careful. Um, so you may want to look up safe discharging techniques for the capacitors if your power supply differs from mine and you have to get closer to the capacitors than I am. Um, but essentially what I did is I soldered leads onto the uh, connector where the main the mains wire plugs into the back of it. So I also had this clip-on connector that is usually used for speakers. It's supposed to be good for the amperage that we're looking at uh, with the 120 volts, 200 watts. So one of the leads from the 120 volt main goes to one of the connectors on there. And the other lead from the 120 volts mains goes into the relay board. So uh, what I had to do first, obviously, was to get the relay board mounted on the back. Uh, it's very important because I did make the mistake of not creating enough clearance inside the power supply the first time I mounted this and ended up having to move it. So it's very important to make sure that you map out your location properly beforehand. So keep in mind if you have like a 120 millimeter fan on your power supply that's attached to the casing, you still have to leave enough le or enough space for that fan to go back into place after you're done. So for my standoffs, all I did was uh, cut some tubing off of the body of a Bic pen actually. Um, then all I had to do was run my uh, M3 screws through that then set the screws in through the um, relay and then just tighten them down with some uh, self-locking nuts and it was good to go. Keep an eye on all your clearances to make sure nothing's close to the main board on the power supply. And then I connected up my uh, 120 volt lead to one side of the relay and the uh, cable going from the relay again out to the uh, connector for the back. And of course I had scouted out a location as well for that to be mounted and uh, after soldering it, well sorry, before soldering it I placed some heat shrink on the wires and then after soldering it I shrunk the heat tubing around the metal connectors and then made sure that 
uh, I had cleaned up and filed where I had cut the holes into the back of the uh, power supply for this to be mounted. Then it was just a matter of putting two M3 screws through the uh, screw-on ports or screw-on holes in the back of the clip connector and closing the whole thing up. So what this means is that when the heat bed isn't active, there's no spot where 120 volts is exposed on my printer. The 120 volts is only going through when the relay is switched on. Um, so you still do have 120 volts going into the printer somewhere, but it's all sort of isolated using these clip connectors, so it minimizes the chances of you accidentally hitting crossed wires. So uh, if you do this, it should make things uh, a lot cleaner. Again, heed the warnings about the capacitors in the power supply. You don't want to accidentally shock yourself. Uh, the voltages and uh, amperage in this thing are no joke. Uh, you could seriously injure yourself, so be careful. And uh, that should be it. If you have any questions about how I did it, or if you have any comments about how I can make it better, toss it in the comments below. If you like the video, thumbs up would be good. Um, and if you didn't like it, well, the other button's there too. Uh, if you're new here, uh, please subscribe, and uh, don't forget to click the bell to be notified when I put out new videos. And until next time, stay creative.